I'm mean, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, a Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. Tease on, you'll see on the right-hand side top. And the bottom line is that you can get Steve's newsletter for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 26%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, folks, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and they come with a huge amount of information. And the bottom line, Steve did a um, little... Well, not a little, a nice article uh, over the weekend. That is phenomenal, no doubt about that. Let's go see what he's talking about. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, summer is certainly ripping by. It I just is. looked at my calendar to realize that the kids down here in Florida go back to school in two weeks. I know, man. That's crazy, right? Yeah. But I'm digging yeah. it because October's coming. So for us folks, October is the break. September is the true. worst month. So, That's true. Yeah, uh, but, it's been been pretty hot here in July. Although it's not too bad on the beach, you get the breeze and you know kind of cools you down. But yeah. but you're right. I did. By the way, I did, I did send out a uh, every, all all the TFNN subscribers right. should received a uh, link uh, for this uh, report. We'll just kind of go through it uh, today and that'd be great because it's yeah, a great so, report, man. Oh, thank you, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And Friday was really a big day, and it was a big day because we actually got two different kind of signals. We got a short term topping signal. And we got an intermediate term um, long signal out there. So let me explain what, what we've got. This The short-term bear signals came from the NDX 100, the Russell 2000, as well as the semiconductor index. And each of them, and I show this here on these uh, charts here, so yep. I show those three. And, and what I'm doing to show each of these three is I'm using the ETF. So that way everybody at home can do the same thing. Okay. They can follow along. So on the left-hand side, we've got the Qs, and we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the Qs got above the one to one A to B equals CD. For me, the way that I like to confirm these patterns, in other words, that they've either topped or bottomed, here we take a look at tops, are when we get a bearish reversal candle. And that's what we got inside the queues on Friday, which was on a daily base, which was a bear sash candle. Now here, this shows, now I, I, what I do realize is that since I've actually posted these charts, I've gotten some new profile levels inside of the queues, we, but we're not gonna go there right, right now. Uh, if, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, the IWM, it made the one-to-one. -one. In fact, got just slightly above that on both Thursday and Friday. But Friday was a bearish engulfing candle. And so that suggests a retracement. And then we've got the SMHs in the right-hand side. Now, that made the one to 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern. Tom, I can't recall, and maybe I've misstated this a few times, but in your book, The Art of Timing the Trade, is it the one to 1.618 or the one to 2? A to B it, equals CD. It's the one say? to one point six one eight. And what what okay. happens when you normally get that? It, that's a change of trend. And when you normally get that, sometimes it whacks to two. But if it goes to two, it stays there a day, and then you're off to the races, no matter which way it goes. That's what it seems. You know, it's very unusual perfect. at one to two. Yeah. Per perfect. Because here, here's a perfect example of, of what, you know, you wrote in your book uh, after all those years of study. And here we can take a look at a daily time frame chart for the semiconductor. And, it's, and it made the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD price projection area, which was in the 231 range. And then we got that bear sash candle. Now, the semiconductor index could, could take a big move to the downside. And what I mean by that is that there's a bearish structured profile that is formed. And a close today below 225.59, which suggests that price could pull all the way back to support. And this is just one support level that we're looking at, which is the bottom of this new profile, which is at 205.94. Now, I won't be able to confirm this profile until tomorrow because I'm using an advanced tool here that identifies these profiles as they're beginning to form. So if people turn into the radio show uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll go ahead and confirm uh, the, uh, the, the semiconductor so we got three that formed from a daily standpoint, what I'll call the short-term time frame, topping signals. The NQ also generated that uh, uh, A to B equals CD pattern. And in this case here, I re oftentimes refer to it as a Gertley cell pattern. Now, it also has new profiles that are attempting to form. And again, I'll confirm these tomorrow during the radio show. But right now, the top of that profile is 12,579. The bottom is sitting at 12,104. What I think is that Price will pull back to that 12,104 level, and if that holds, that's the next um, buy the dip point in this move as we continue to move higher out here, or as the markets continue to move higher. 
if we take a look at the, and, and, and when I say that, folks, is because now we'll get to the intermediate term signal. And this intermediate term signal came from the uh, Dow. So the weekly chart for the Dow. And what it did was this this little green squiggly green red squiggly line is what's referred to as an oscillator and change line. And what I want folks to take a look at is throughout 2022, price has been below this level. It's been tested intra-week several times, but each time it fails and it closes back below that and shows how that has been a key level of resistance. Well, on Friday, we got to close above that level. That level, folks, is 31,630. Now, if we get a second consecutive close this week above that level that's going to confirm that pattern or confirm a change in trend pattern a little similar to tom's 1 to 1.618 a to b equals cd so because we haven't closed above this in 2022 it's sending us a signal that there's a change in trend that is attempting to form i like to use two consecutive bars tom either above resistance or below support to give us that confirmation so folks should watch the 31 630 area within a few dollars up or down this is the weekly chart for the dow and it shows that uh, we have consecutive this, this, this weekly chart shows us that the that the bounces that we've had the counter trend rallies that we've had in the market have lasted for two consecutive bars what i mean by that is where one bar closes above the prior close so here we take a look at and, and i believe that this week or last week was week number one we should see a higher close come the end of the week and bear market rallies tend to complete in two to three bars and that's really important to understand here during the 2007 2009 bear market folks you'll see where these black arrows you'll see all of these two or three bar rallies out there if we take a look at uh, and last week close above the OUL signaling likely that there's something more if i go back here um, well, let's just, let's just let's continue moving on. During the 2000 bear market, we can take a look at one, two, three, four, five different examples of two bar rallies out there for, for, for instances of that. So it's common to see a two or three bar rally. And it tends to work better, Tom, for the weekly and the monthly time frame. Here's the 1921, 1929 bear market out here. And we can see these two bar rallies. There was one four bar rally, but price still stayed below that oscillator and change line. 1973, same kind of thing. So folks, open up that report you'll see this out there that this chart here Tom that I provided to everybody this chart looks at the Dow price and major currencies now yes. you and I we think of this as the Dow price in dollars but if you're over in Europe and you're trading in euros you're thinking about how's the Dow performing your currency or if you're in Japan how's the Dow performing in yen or if you're in, in England how's the Dow performing in pounds if you take a look at these charts out here the Dow performing those major currencies doesn't look like it's really in a bear market I mean it's almost near their all-time highs right. which took place in January of uh, 2022. Actually, in the end, price in the end, it was April of 2022 out there. And this is the global flow of capital. And here what we can see, if you take a look at the top chart or the very bottom chart, is the euro is below the 2017 areas. And this shows, and the reason why we could see this rally that lasts for two to three months, and that's what I'm referring to, folks, not just a two to three week rally, but I think that change in trend is signaling to us we could see something last for two to three months out there. So open up the link to that report. You'll have all these charts here. And if you have any questions, folks can email me. I, I have that. And folks, that you want to read that report. And if you don't have it in your email, go in your spam. Because it's an awesome yeah. report, man. And then come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You hit the market, uh, market probability. Mystery probability. Thank you, man. You got it. Uh, and you are off to the races. Have a great one, Thanks, Steve. Tom. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.